Welcome to La Criminotica. In today's episode, we dive into the dark story of Nordini Amrani, a figure who spread terror and left an indelible mark on the collective memory. Her acts, even today, raise questions, debates and reflections on the nature of evil and the circumstances that lead someone to commit such heinous acts. Get ready to discover the story behind the man, his motivations, and the consequences of his actions. Let's get started. The Liege Massacre Classification, Mass Murderer Characteristics, Amrani had to appear in court the same day of the attack for a matter of a sexual nature. Number of Victims, 6 Date of Crime, December 13, 2011 Date of Birth, November 15, 1978 Victims, Antonetta Ricano, 45, Mehdi Belhaj, 15, Pierre Giroville, 17, Gabriel Leblond, 1, Claudette Putzis, 75, and Laurent Kramer, 20. Method of Crime, Hand Grenades and Shooting with an FNFAL Assault Rifle. Location, Liège, Belgium. Status, Commits Suicide by Shooting Himself in the Forehead the Same Day. Nordini Amrani, 2011 Liège Massacre. The 2011 Liège Massacre was a suicide action directed against the population that took place on December 13, 2011 in the Belgian city of Liège. The attacker, 33-year-old Nordini Amrani, a regular local criminal, threw several hand grenades and fired his FNFAL combat rifle at civilians in the central St. Lambert Square, killing five people and injuring them. To more than 120, some extremely serious. He later committed suicide with a gun. The attack. The events occurred on December 13, 2011 at around 12.30 p.m. in St. Lambert Square, a central square, very crowded at that time where many shops and bus stops are concentrated. Located on a nearby platform, the attacker threw several grenades in the direction of the bus stops with the aim of harming as many people as possible. The attack unleashed chaos in the area and forced a large police deployment to control the situation and attend to the many injured. After the launch of the fourth grenade, Nordini Amrani chose to end her life. The Perpetrator Nordini Amrani was a Belgian citizen, born on November 15, 1978 in Ixel. According to his lawyer, although he was of Moroccan origin, he did not speak Arabic and he was not a Muslim. He was on probation after being sentenced in 2008 by the Liège court to 58 months in prison for illegal possession of weapons as well as possession of 2,800 cannabis plants. On the same day of the events, in the morning, he had already committed a first assault by killing a domestic worker who worked in her building after inviting her to her house with the excuse of giving her work. He then left his home with a bag in which he hid weapons and ammunition to go to the place from where he carried out the attack. The Victims Antonetta Ricano, 45, killed in Amrani's apartment on December 13. Mehdi Belhaj, 15, killed in St. Lambert Square on December 13. Pierre Giroville, 17, killed in St. Lambert Square on December 13. Gabriel Leblond, 1, died in a hospital on December 13. Claudette Putzis, 75, died in a hospital on December 15. Laurent Kramer, 20, died in a hospital on December 23. Reactions Official reactions have been numerous and various Belgian political personalities went to the scene. Among them, King Albert II and his wife Paula, or Belgian Prime Minister Elio de Rupa, accompanied by ministers Joël Milkit and Annemie Turtlebaum. From abroad, Belgium has received condolences from the British Prime Minister David Cameron and the President of the Eurogroup and current Prime Minister of Luxembourg Jean-Claude Juncker. The President of the European Commission, the Portuguese, José Manuel Barroso, has been shocked and deeply sorry by what happened while the President of the European Parliament, Jerzy Buzek, has spoken of deep dismay. 
The Liege murderer was convicted of rape in 2003. December 14, 2011. Nordini Amrani, the multiple murderer from Liege, had been convicted in 2003 of rape, according to the city's press, which was also surprised that the 2008 trial and conviction for possession of a cannabis plantation did not enter into the matter of the ownership of a veritable arsenal of weapons of war discovered in the same investigations. Two more elements of stupefaction for a Liege that has woken up to the news that before shooting blindly and committing suicide, Amrani killed a neighbor's cleaning lady in her house. Amrani, born in Brussels 33 years ago, had a burdened judicial past since he began to stray as a petty criminal in his orphan teenage years. The last stage was to be covered on Tuesday, with an appointment at 1 p.m. at the Palace of Justice for a matter, apparently, of sexual content. He spoke with his attorney, Jean-Francois Dister, on Monday and Tuesday mornings. He was very concerned about the possibility of having to go back to jail, Dister told a radio station. I think that overwhelmed him. However, the lawyer did not notice anything disturbing in Amrani. He was nervous, like every time he had problems with the law, says he, who says he does not understand anything about what happened. Neither do the inhabitants of Liège themselves understand anything, who are slowly approaching the scene of the massacre, in the central square of St. Lambert, now illuminated by a Christmas market with lights that shrink the spirits. They leave flowers, stuffed animals or farewell and regret notes in the place. And a big poster with a single question, why? The city is so in a state of shock that in the Book of Condolences opened at the City Hall, only a handful of residents had expressed their pain in the middle of the afternoon, shortly before the Prime Minister, Elio Di Rupa, came to sign. A fourth innocent fatality has been added to the three, two young people aged 15 and 17 and a 17-month-old boy, who lost their lives in the attack on the square. The police have found in a place attached to Omrani's house, where he once cultivated cannabis and kept an authentic arsenal, the lifeless body and with a shot to the head of a 45-year-old woman who helped a neighbor with housework. The armory, with grenade launchers, assault rifles, a precision rifle and more than 9,000 spare parts and ammunition for various weapons, was discovered in 2007 when the police were investigating the plantation, but it was never discussed before a judge. As reported by La Muse, the Liège newspaper. The newspaper also reveals that Amrani was sentenced to two years in prison for rape in 2003, a sentence that he served only partially in application of the terms of the sentence. He was now on probation, since October 2010, for the sentence imposed on him in the cannabis case. A new hearing, like the one he had pending on Monday, ended with a feared negative result, along with exact knowledge of all the background information, would have meant the immediate annulment of his probation. The appointment was at 1 p.m. The blind shooting in front of the Palace of Justice began at about 12.30. Shortly after Amrani shot himself a shot in the forehead, as detailed by the prosecutor, Daniele Reinders. Conclusion of the Nordini Amrani Case the case of Nordini Amrani is a grim reminder of how one individual, motivated by a mixture of personal problems, past trauma and possibly mental disorders, can unleash a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. The series of events that led Amrani to take action at Place St. Lambert is based not only on her actions on the day of the attack, but also on the circumstances and decisions that brought him to that critical point. 1. Contributing Factors the complex circumstances of Amrani's life, including her criminal record, mental health issues, and her personal challenges, cannot be overlooked when analyzing the reasons behind her violent outburst. Modern societies often face the challenge of identifying and supporting individuals who show signs of extreme discontent or emotional imbalance before they become a threat to themselves or others. 2. The Society and Its Role it is essential that society, including government institutions, social services, and the community in general, pay attention to the warning signs and create mechanisms to intervene appropriately. 
While it is impossible to completely prevent random acts of violence, proper support and early intervention can reduce the risk. 3. Reflection on Public Safety The tragedy also highlights the ongoing need to review and improve public safety measures. Although it is not always possible to prevent attacks by determined individuals, it is crucial that law enforcement and public institutions are prepared to respond efficiently and protect citizens. 4. The Legacy of the Victims Above all, Amrani's case underscores the importance of remembering and honoring the victims. The people affected by this tragic act and those who came together in solidarity after the attack represent resilience and the human spirit in times of crisis. 5. Lessons Learned This event has left important lessons. It teaches about the fragility of life, the importance of community, and the need to always be vigilant and understanding of those around us. It also highlights the relevance of a judicial system that can effectively assess the risks that certain individuals may pose to society. In summary, the case of Nordini Amrani stands as a testament to the human capacity for evil, but also to the resilience, unity, and determination of a community to overcome adversity and seek a more secure and understanding future. And with this, we come to the end of our journey through the dark episode in the life of Nordini Amrani. A somber chapter in history that reminds us of the importance of being attentive, understanding and supporting those in crisis in our community. If you found it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe for more research and analysis in La Criminotica. Until the next episode, stay informed and take care of yourself and yours.